Visit sailright.com for your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Hi, I'm Kenny with Sims Upholstery, and today we're going to show you how to make the rear windshield enclosure for a Yamaha YXZ. In this first chapter, we'll be patterning for our window panel. Okay, now for our back window here, I've just taped off where I'm gonna go with the actual cover. I need to make sure that I'm far enough away from this that this isn't problematic right here. So I'm probably gonna stay on the inside of the tape everywhere. Um, and I think I'm gonna do snaps here with maybe like a tab. <clears throat> Up here we're going to do Velcro. Same thing with the other side. Okay, so let's put some patterning material up here. We'll simply tuck our patterning material up at the top and then tape it down. It's probably a good idea to actually use strapping tape and basting tape around the perimeter and stick the pattern down before tracing around it. Kenny's done this a lot, so he's not going to do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do, since this is kind of awkward, is I'm going to like mark where the corners are going to be. And then I'm going to try to make the pattern symmetrical after laying it flat. So I'm trying to aim at this where I'm going to have this snap here. And then I am going to trace this up just so I can keep this angle when I take it to the table. I'm gonna actually put snaps on the face of this. So I'm trying to figure out where we're gonna lay flat to that, looks okay. Can you trace around this entire pattern and then we'll take it off and take it back to the table. Like that, maybe this is more. We'll mark the locations for our snaps onto our pattern, but we do not recommend using the pattern to install those snaps in Ooh. the window. Once the panel is complete, we'll come back to the side-by-side -side and determine the best placement for those snaps. I'm just marking where the top is and pointing to it so I know. In this next chapter, we'll be cutting out our window panel. All right, so we've got the back pattern here. I'm just gonna trim this down a little bit here. Get rid of some of this excess pattern. Okay, so basically, I want to make this symmetrical one way or the other. We know that these distances are the distances that we want to stop and start at. So what I'm going to do is try to fold this in half based on those two and kind of just find where the center is. Okay, so. We're gonna call that pretty close to center. This right here. So we're going to mark it as such. And this actually lands right where my center snap is. That's how I know how awesome I am at doing this. Okay, so I can either take this line and make it my main line, or I can take this line and make it my main line. 
And I think I'm going to take the straighter line and make it my main line. <clears throat> make this my new main line. Okay. And then also, you can tell at the top here where this is going to need trimmed off. Okay, so even down here, to make this symmetrical, I'm going to take the line on the other side here, since it's the furthest line, and make it my new main line. You could measure it and square things off. I'm just trying to get the shape more or less what I wanted it. So you can see my main lines are here and here. And since this is folded already, with the pattern folded in half, we'll cut on those lines we just straightened on our pattern. Okay. So we have our pattern that we're going to lay out for our window. We'll mark all the way around the perimeter in this manner and make sure that we mark the locations for each one of our snaps even though we'll probably change the location of these snaps later on. Okay, so I'm going to make these curves more gradual here for the binding. If not, it'll be a pain. We'll round all of the corners on our window just like we did here. Okay, so I'm just going to cut out my pattern here. And now we'll cut it out using a pair of scissors. Next up, we'll be cutting and basting our facing strips. Okay, I'm just going to cut three inch strips out of my stamoid here. We'll cut out three strips all the way across the width of our fabric. That'll be enough for our facing strips on the perimeter of our window. Okay, so for our customer's window, they're fine with us just doing the facing on the outside since it's a back window. They're not really gonna be looking back there much to see it anyway, so we're just gonna do facing on the front side. So I think probably what we need to do is flip our facing over. And we are going to stick this underneath of it. Okay, we're just gonna cut where this is gonna be. We'll round the edges of the longer strips for both the top and the bottom. Okay, so for this facing, we're gonna leave about a half an inch over on that. Same thing here. You just need to make sure that you're going to be covering it with this side of the facing. And repeat the process on the other side. Okay, so I'm just going to run quarter inch seam tape around the perimeter now. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and remove all of the seam tape at once here. So let's just make sure I'm within three inches there. Yep, within three inches there. Let's go up a little bit. Now that we've confirmed this facing strip is the correct size, we can base it in place. We'll repeat this process for the piece on the other side. We'll put basting tape both on this facing strip and on the one on the other end that we installed. We'll remove the transfer paper and apply the longer strips of facing so that they match up evenly with the corners at the bottom edge. We'll repeat this same process for the facing strip on that top edge. 
If your facing strip is a bit off, the beauty of basting tape is you can peel it back up and reposition it. We'll trim any extra vinyl window material off with a pair of scissors. Coming up next, sewing the facing and binding. Okay, I'm just gonna sew in the top part of my window. And you need to sew this flap down here too, your facing. So you might as well just do that now. And start right there. When we sew the facing strips that are on top, we will sew all the way down to the bottom edge so that the entire raw edge is sewn down. Then we will do some reversing, bury our needle, rotate the fabric, and continue to sew. We'll repeat this process on the other side. Okay, so I had a little bit of bubble happening when I was sewing, and that happens when you're missing the thin material to a heavy material. It's almost inevitable. So, the nice thing about this is you can just fix it and get it to lay flat like you want it just by releasing this part here. Isn't that neat? Much better. Repeat this process on all the rest of the facings until you get them as flat as possible. Now we'll sew the binding on all the way around the perimeter and we'll start with a little bit of reversing. You may notice a few needle holes along the edge of this panel and that's because we ran out of bobbin when we first started and had to restart. Since this will be covered by the binding, those holes will never be seen. When sewing binding, you should focus on how the fabric is being fed into the binder at the exiting point. This will give the best results possible. It's quite normal to have a few wrinkles when sewing around a corner like this since the binding has to shrink up to take the curve. We'll continue sewing all the way around our panel in the same manner and then show you how we join our binding at the end. Okay, you can see where the end is going to overlap here, so I'm just going to cut extra. And we'll do some reversing at the end. Okay, and that's a shot of what our window looks like. I'm gonna take it back and make sure everything works. Next up, marking our panel and then installing the hook and loop. So now I'm gonna mark where I want my Velcro and where I want my webbing tab. So this down here is gonna be the webbing and we're gonna go fairly close to the corner with this. And the webbing's gonna be folded over, attached to the bottom, and then we're gonna use a snap to this bar here. And I'm just marking the same thing over here in the corner. It looks like we're gonna be okay right there. Okay, so I'm gonna wanna Velcro right here. On the inside of this bar, on both sides. And then we're gonna have a Velcro at the end here. Right about there. And then we're gonna do the same thing over here. These aren't necessarily gonna be exactly the same because the shape isn't like how the window sits. It's probably gonna be a little bit over because of this. 
we may even need to like cut that out but i don't think so i think what we'll just end up doing is maybe making adjusting the webbing over here in the corner to make that long enough because i think the window covers what we needed to cover okay okay so i'm going to take these lines one and three quarters down like i did for the doors when Kenny says doors, he's referencing our UTV door enclosure panels. If you'd like to watch that video, we've included a link in the upper right hand corner and in the description below. And then these are just five and a half inches. Every single one, just like the ones on the doors. Makes it easy. Make sure your loop is at the top. And just start making your pieces for them again. Okay, that's all we need for that, so we're ready to sew those on. Okay. Make sure your loop's at the top there. When sewing this panel on, it's important that the loop is I can feel at it the under top there. and facing the UTV. This makes it much easier to install the panel from the inside. Then we'll sew in forward and reverse a few times to hold our hook and loop in place and repeat this step at all of our marked locations. Coming up, installing the webbing and snaps into our window. It's a lot easier to install this window if you have a second helper. Our second helper is on the inside, trimming our hook and loop to size and then installing each one of those across the top. Don't stand too close, it's filming. Oh, it's filming. He's trimming the bottom part, the hook. The hook. Probably about like an inch, just to make it fit a little bit better as you're wrapping around the pole. Like two inches almost. Two inches? Okay. It's just making it easier for us to apply it. So that looks pretty straight, to be honest. Okay. So, I think that since that's so straight, that we are actually going to go ahead and make our marks for our webbing. I was going to set my snaps first, and maybe you'll want to set your snaps first, but I don't think... That that's as big of a deal right now necessarily because it's pretty flat and it's pretty straight you can kind of see it's pretty straight okay so we want to fold it over and you're probably going to want to hot knife the end but we'll do that when we go back over there so looks like that's probably enough to do what we want to do so I'm going to cut this with the scissors here, but when I get back over there, I'm going to use a hot knife to seal that. And that's going to attach here. And then we're going to have our snap there, and that's going to pull that taunt. And we're going to make sure that this is going to work on this side as well. So it's kind of hard to see what's going on down there, but... It looks like that's going to be okay too. So we need the size webbing for both and we'll measure that when we get back and give you the exact size. Okay, so now I'm going to mark where my buttons are going to be or my snaps. So what I'm going to do, you can see where the center of this about is. So I'm going to fold this up. And get about center here. 
Notice Kenny did remove the markings that were on our facing on the top side. This is so that he could reposition his snaps exactly where he wanted them. If you want to measure it to be exact, be my guest. But I don't think you have to do that necessarily. Now we'll use a drill and install a screw stud into each one of those marked locations on our side by side. Now that those studs are installed, Kenny is going to use our easy fit snap positioning system to figure out exactly where his buttons need to go. Okay, that looks good. Now we'll use the easy fit release tool to pull up our pin sockets. Snap tool. We'll put the socket and button into our press and snap tool and use it to install snaps in all three of those marked locations. Now that the snaps are installed, we'll snap each one into place. Okay, now we we're gonna take our webbing and our ply. We decided to do the snaps first, just because we already had this up here. Now we're gonna put our webbing here in the corners, and then we're gonna do the snaps for that. This is our piece of webbing. We're gonna call that like seven inches. So I would just cut it at seven inches. Scrap that one. These are the two usable ones. And we're just going to put them on the corners here. One there. And one there. And I'm actually going to tape these on this time. I can feel it that it's about half to three quarters of an inch past there. Oh, sorry. That's what it looks like on the other side then. Okay, we're just gonna sew these on the corner. It's about a three millimeter. We'll repeat this process on the opposite end and won't show that. We'll put our panel back up by snapping in the snaps and attaching our hook and loop. Okay, so I want to leave a little bit for my, me to grab here to be able to pull. So we're going to put the snap here-ish. And then right, we're going to drill right here. Well, you're going to have to wait till I make the mark. We're gonna drill right here on that little cross. Eighth inch drill bit. Let's just make sure our easy snap tools are gonna to fit in here. Looks like we're okay. So for your easy snap tool, we're going to use the snap, snap right, right surface mount stud die and a blind rivet first. to install our snap stud. And then you put your snap stud. Okay, so now we're going to set our snap tool. You need to make sure that this is as flat to the surface as you can get. We're installing the stud using the snap right surface mount stud die and a professional rivet tool from Sailrite. And that is a nice tight snap. Just gonna stick our spike on here. Oh. 
Once again, we're using the Easy Fit positioning system to find the exact location we want to install our button and socket. We'll use our press and snap tool once again to install that snap into the webbing strap. Now we'll remove the Easy Fit pin and snap our window into place. Okay, you're just gonna repeat the process on this side, but I'm gonna have to take this off at the shop. So this is the whole thing, front, back, and sides. And here's a look at that back window panel after it's installed on the side-by-side. -side. We wanna say thank you to Kenny Sims from Sims Upholstery for collaborating with Sailrite on this project. If you're interested in finished UTV enclosure panels, you can contact him using the information provided on the screen. Coming up next, a list of the materials and tools we use to complete this project. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call or email. We're glad to help. I'm Seth Grant. From all of us at Sailrite, thanks for watching.